Hello, my name is Tony Andres, and I'm an associate professor of philosophy at Christendom College. I've, I'm very pleased to have been asked to speak to you today on the subject of logic for the International Catholic University. I'm going to be teaching about the logic of Aristotle and St. Thomas Aquinas. Now, the course will have a total of 12 one-half-hour lessons. I'd like to do two things in this, our introductory lesson. First, I want to talk about the importance of logic for the study of Thomistic philosophy and theology. Second, I want to give you a big picture, an overview of the course as a whole. But before I get to those two tasks, I want to give you a brief historical survey of the origin of Aristotelian logic. We find logical themes being discussed by the ancient philosophers Socrates and Plato. Socrates discusses definition and induction in particular, while Plato takes up many logical topics in several of his dialogues. But neither Socrates nor Plato has given us a complete systematic treatment of logic. It took Plato's student Aristotle to systematize the study of logic. Aristotle wrote several treatises on the different parts of logic, and these are collected in what scholars call the organon, which is a Greek word that means tool. Aristotle's organon was the basis of most logical study for over 1,500 years, and it's been the subject of numerous commentaries. St. Thomas Aquinas' teacher, St. Albert the Great, wrote, wrote commentaries on every single book of Aristotle's organon. Uh, St. Thomas himself wrote two commentaries on the books of Aristotle's organon, uh, one on the book called On Interpretation, another on Aristotle's Posterior Analytics. What we're going to do in this class is, first of all, to discuss St. Thomas's prologue to his commentary on Aristotle's Posterior Analytics, because this is not just a prologue for the Posterior Analytics, but rather one for the whole of Aristotle's logic. And in that prologue, he covers the two themes that we want to talk about today, the importance of the study of logic and an outline of the whole of the subject of logic. Now, St. Thomas begins his prologue by talking about the importance of logic, and he begins with a quotation from Aristotle's Metaphysics. Now, Aristotle writes, the human race lives by art and reason. To explain this quotation, St. Thomas draws a contrast between man and the other, the uh, irrational animals. He says, man lives by art and reason while the animals live by a kind of instinct. This is how he puts it. While the other animals are driven to their actions by a certain natural instinct, man is directed to his actions by the judgment of reason. Here's an example. A sheep sees a wolf. It does not reason to itself, the wolf is dangerous, that's a wolf, therefore I should run away. It just runs away by a kind of natural instinct. The sheep simply has an overwhelming feeling of fear, and that feeling drives it to run. Man ha also has feelings of fear, but the difference is that man can over overcome those feelings of fear through the use of his reason. A man might see the wolf, feel fear, but judge that at this time the wolf is not dangerous, or that it will be more dangerous to run from the wolf than to face him. Man ultimately directs his actions by reason, while the other animals are directed by instinct. Now, at first, this might seem to point to the, the superiority of the other animals over man, because when we're just talking about reasoning, reasoning is not as quick as instinct and is more prone to error. That is, a man asks himself whether he should run from the wolf, and by the time he's through deliberating, the wolf has eaten him. Or perhaps he's had enough time, but his reasoning is mistaken. He reasons it's more dangerous to run, run, run away when actually he should run away. Reason, because it requires deliberation and because it's it's prone to mistakes, seems actually to be worse than instinct. 
So how are we going to answer this question? How are we going to see how reason could possibly be better than instinct? St. Thomas answers it this way. So it is that the various arts serve to perfect human actions so that they proceed easily, in an orderly way, and without error. Now, what I'd like to do is go through that sentence bit by bit to try to understand what, it, what St. Thomas means. First, let's talk about art. What does he mean by art? St. Thomas has a broader conception of art than perhaps we have. He's not just including the fine arts, sculpture, painting, music. All right. What St. Thomas means by art is a general habit of being able to make things or to perform certain actions in the proper way. For example, the ability the carpenter has to make a table or a chair is an art according to St. Thomas. And the ability the builder has to make a good house is another kind of art. St. Thomas says that art gives a reason the kind of ability that the animals have through instinct. Art enables reason to direct human actions so that they proceed quickly, easily, and without making a lot of mistakes. So St. Thomas defines art as follows. Art is nothing but a sure and rational ordering of the way human actions arrive at their correct ends through determinate means. Now, St. Thomas himself uses the art of building as an example. Every man needs shelter, and if we look at man before he discovered the art of building, we can see that he still makes shelters, very simple and imperfect. For example, a lean-to. He gathers the materials he thinks might help, big leaves, vines, a few sticks, and he ties them together. He lashes the whole thing to a large tree. When he uses the lean-to, he finds that it's better than no shelter at all, but that it's very imperfect. The roof leaks, it lets in a lot of cold air. Now here's the lesson. Using reason by itself, a man can build something, but what he builds is very imperfect. Because man has reason, however, he can reflect upon the action of building. He can reflect on how he learnt to build the lean-to. He can think about the materials he used, the methods he used to construct it, and as a consequence, he can sort out the ones that worked well and the ones that did not work well. He will build a better lean-to more easily next time. And as he progresses further in building, he comes to develop in himself more and more perfectly a kind of art, a way of building. So that what he builds is more perfect and he builds it more effectively. So we can sum up the whole thing this way. Because man has reason rather than instinct, initially his actions are very imperfect. But because he can use reason to reflect upon his actions, he can perfect the means he uses to accomplish his purposes. And that reflection results in the discovery and acquisition of the arts. Now, what we've seen so far is that art in general is necessary. That men live by reason and by art. What we now want to see is why a certain particular art, the art of logic, is necessary. Now St. Thomas writes, reason can not only direct the lower powers of the soul, but reason can direct itself in its own actions, because it belongs to the understanding part to reflect.